Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're just a couple of nerds in love that love talking about movies and TV shows together. Which is why we started a YouTube channel to rank and score our favorite movies and TV shows. And Ken created the Magnificent Score Sheet. We created it together, alright? It's the most scientifically way to arbitrarily score a film, alright? So we give these movies a score based on different categories, and then based on that score, that's where we rank them in the, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's what we're doing first. We're doing our Marvel movies. In case you didn't know by the, the title of this, <laughs> this video. So, of course, this video is our recap of Phase 1 of Marvel. Yeah, now in addition to our scores and ranks that we're going to give you, we're also going to show you little bits and clips of our movie reviews that we have, just so you can see our adorable, loving style, in case you couldn't tell already. <laughs> now let's go to our ranks and scores, though. So bringing up the rear is The Incredible Hulk. With poor CGI that was overly focused on the Hulk's flowing locks. It was like the Hulk was in an Herbal Essences commercial. Giving it a zero in our visual effects category, as well as two leads seriously lacking humor and charm. I felt they were standard enough as a male lead and female, and I'm sorry, but kind of playing Edward, Jane Edward enough. Norton might have charm, and he is standard. <laughs> that is why she's not banging him. I hope that's not how you describe me to people when you describe me, you know, like, my fiance, oh yeah, he's so basic, I love him. <laughs> the Incredible Hulk received a poultry score of 21 that could have been boosted with better supporting cast and more Hulk smash moments. Next in our rankings for Marvel's Phase 1 films is everybody's favorite MCU movie to bash, Iron Man 2. Despite an inspiring start to the film where Tony Stark's charisma continued to help his bangability score with Bethany. I still feel like he can teach me a thing or two. I just want you to know that saying that kind of makes me look bad. <laughs> it, just, it just does. God knows, we all know he's experienced, so he's probably not going to be boring. I mean, you got to give the man some credit. If you think he's a badass, he's I... also got palladium sickness in this, and you don't know if that's contagious. <laughs> Tony Stark's humor was also on point in the beginning of the film. I want one. No. Helping Iron Man 2 earn a surprising combined humor score of 24.5 from us. This movie also gave us the introduction of Black Widow as a sexy badass, which boosted the movie's female empowerment score by a ton. But Iron Man 2 dragged too much in the middle due to a dull villain and misguided palladium sickness subplot, receiving negative points for literally boring us to sleep, giving it a total score of 39.5. Scoring just above Iron Man 2 in our rankings is Captain America, the first Avenger. Marvel again gives us a weak villain in the Red Skull that should have been so much better since there was plenty of material to work with, giving it a poor overall score in our villain categories, as well as having a weak plot. But thankfully, Marvel gave us two lead characters in Peggy Carter and Steve Rogers that scored extremely high in our hero likability category, and Tommy Lee Jones' portrayal of Colonel Phillips boosted the movie's humor score, earning him a score of three in our side characters category. Captain America, the first Avenger, just squeaked by Iron Man 2 with a combined score from us of 40.5. Getting into our top three films for phase one of the Marvel Cinematic Universe is the movie that started it all, Iron Man. Iron Man was carried by Robert Downey Jr.'s charm. It had a respectable score in both dialogue and soundtrack, but it could have been helped more had the movie not relied so heavily on its lead and given us some more interesting side characters. And while it did okay in our humor score, getting a combined score of 16 from us... It was probably hurt a little bit because we've watched it so many times that we knew the jokes were coming. Iron Man got a total combined score of 54.5 from us. Which was much higher than any of the films below it, but not quite as high as our next film, which might surprise me. Thor received a score of 59, which was primarily due to a strong supporting cast that really boosted its total side character score. As well as Marvel providing us with perhaps the best villain in Tom Hiddleston's Loki, who received high scores across the board in our villain categories. Thor could have scored even better had it provided us with a better love story, though. I gave the love story a one. I gave this a two. You want Lady Sif as I the love story. You don't like it. Really you don't like how you end up with Jane. So, like, I'm like, how could you give it a two? <laughs> it's believable, but you don't like it. I personally want to see Thor wind up with Lady Sif. I'm very sad that does not happen. Which leaves us with our highest ranking film from phase one of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, The, the Avengers. Avengers. Marvel really hit its stride with this film, knocking it out of the park in the humor department with a score of 53. As well as delivering on some delicious action sequences that left us wanting more and earning a total combined score of 24 from us and scoring high on female empowerment also. 
Despite Ken's best efforts to dismiss the incredible badass character of Black Widow. The women there are, are there to kick butt, but there was no ultimate move by a woman that uh, saved everything, I think. Seriously? Oh, you're looking at me because, oh, no, Black Widow did the last the little thing at the end. It is, in fact, Black Widow who closes the portal. Although, it wasn't her idea, just like it wasn't Pepper Potts' idea to push the button. She needed a man to tell her what to do in order to get the staff and close the portal. So, even then, not, not as strong as it could be. Throw in a great villain in Loki and a tremendous sporting cast for our two lead characters. Who we ultimately decided were Captain America and Iron Man. Which you can feel free to debate us on in the comments below. Please do. Avengers received a crushing combined score of 134, making it far and away Marvel's best film in phase one, as well as the only film to break triple digits on our scoring sheet. That wraps up our scores and ranks for Marvel's phase one. Uh, if you like what you saw, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button and uh, give us a subscribe down below so you can check out all of our videos and see you know, what we gave the scores to, why we gave them. You can go ahead and debate us down in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. And if you want even more in-depth analysis, check out our podcast, which is available on Podbean or on iTunes. And we go into a lot more behind the scenes thinking on why we gave the scores the way that we did. And you can follow along for every phase of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and fill out a score sheet online so that your score can be combined with our score for the final rankings. Exactly. And uh, that score sheet's available down below this video. And you can also check us out uh, on Instagram at NotDefinitive and on Twitter at DefinitiveNot. Uh, we, you know, we think our scores were, were pretty fair and we stand by them, but we realize that they are definitely not definitive.